Good day, all, and welcome to my takeaway talk on the Grafana stack. Who am I? Well, I am Vessel. I am a developer at BBD, currently working in their MPS division as an embedded platform engineer. I'm also in my final year at Belgium campus, uh, finishing up my dissertation. I'm here today because as part of the grad program, uh, I'm supposed to give a takeaway talk, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, my day-to-day -day job is to make sure that prod keeps on being prod, which is working. And today I'll be discussing one of the tools that I use to keep an eye on production and make sure that it is working as it should be. Welcome to my takeaway talk on Grafana and Friends, otherwise known as the OGTM stack. Some of you know them, some of you have even worked on them, and some of you have absolutely no idea what any of these names mean. Today's talk is going to be predominantly directed at you and should serve as a soft introduction to all the different components and how they kind of interact with each other uh, and how it can help you with your observability in your cloud. Deja vu? Yes, if you saw my cloud talk earlier this year, then uh, you don't need to be here. <laughs> that talk was lost to the ether, so we're doing a reshoot. First up, we have Grafana, the G in LGTM. Grafana is a visualization front end for your data. That data is usually observability data, like uptime of a service, latency of a network, memory usage of your database, you know, important stuff. But Grafana makes absolutely no assertions to the type of data you use to display with it. You can display any kind of data. This is a fun one. If it loads in there we go so this is a dashboard of somebody pointing grafana at the at the live real-time data from their controller input while they were driving in a game so uh, i think they're doing well i have no idea what <laughs> uh, uh, more commonly grafana is used by text the tech savvy consumer to display their iot data so you can see somebody is graphing their uh, power usage for their home and has a nice uh, projection for how much they're going to pay at the end of the month. Uh, for the present company, we work in uh, the cloud and uh, technology things, so you, we would probably use Grafana to display more important stuff like the amount of server requests, uh, memory usage and CPU usage aggregated, and you can use Grafana to display that data in any kind of visualization you would dream of. Uh, how about line graph grafana's got that if you want better statistics sure there you go bar graph how about a checkerboard statistic dashboard front end thing this is actually very useful it looks very complicated but it's very nice to just have a, uh, a one pane view of a lot of different services or even gauges i particularly like the retro gauge it's very stylish uh Truly, your data, your way. You can display it any way you want, and Grafana allows you to do that. Now, Grafana allows you to do that to answer three very important questions. Uh, what is currently on fire? Why is it currently on fire? And where did the fire begin? Uh, it's our opinion that you should probably use metrics to answer the what, logs to answer the why, and traces to answer the where and following how it, like the fire progressed, if we're using that analogy. So if Grafana is your front into your data, then where will that data live? Grafana doesn't store any data. It's just a query front end that you use to display that. So what would be your back end? Well, you can use any of the many of the many freely available data source plugins from the library to connect to your existing database. You have many common database plugins like Postgres or um, MySQL or MS, uh, what are they calling it again? Microsoft Server, any of those common database plugins. You can also use some service integrations like Athena or Datadog or CloudWatch. And you can also use some weird ones like GitHub or Google Sheets if you're into that kind of thing to store for storing your data. Uh, you can use any of those or you could use Grafana Mimmer. Eventually, you'll see the logo eventually, I hope. Maybe I should just jiggle it. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So <laughs> you can use Grafana Memer, the M in LGTM. Uh, Memer is a metrics database uh, with massive scaling in mind, uh, a time series database you would use to store your metrics data. Memer is pretty new right now. It was released earlier this year, a little bit green. 
we had some issues just because we were running on a very old version of Kubernetes. So Mimmer is pretty new right now. It was released earlier this year, uh, and it will become the time series database of choice for the LGTM stack, uh, as it makes up for a pretty big shortfall that the previous solution, which was called Prometheus, uh, which is specifically database scalability. If uh, you've ever worked with distributed databases before, you will like understand how Mimmer achieves this. It's by splitting the problem into two lines, a read line and a write line that can be scaled independently. So depending on how you use the database, it will scale to meet that need. Are you doing a lot of writes? Are you doing a lot of reads? Are you doing a lot of both? It can scale to meet your the, the demand that you place on it. Uh, so Mimmer has been tested with a billion active series. So yes, it can scale if you give it room to scale. Let's uh, go a little bit more into the Prometheus, which was the previous system before that. Before Mimmer, Prometheus was used as both an exporter and the data storage component. This allowed for very simple setups because when you set up Prometheus, you set up data uh, uh, metric scraping and you've solved data storage. The problem is using that on big scale meant a kind of juggling act where the more balls you have to juggle, the more difficult it becomes to juggle all of them. Cortex Help, which was the previous uh, solution to uh, scaling Prometheus, uh, but Mimmer is built from the ground up to properly answer the question. Uh, it won't replace Prometheus. Prometheus will now just take a more, um, will be more specialized into scraping instead of data storage. Uh, so here's a nice uh, view of kind of what it's going to look like. You will use Grafana Agent Prometheus or some other integration to feed metrics data into Mimmer. And then you would use Grafana to query that from Mimmer and then display all your pretty data dashboards. So when I was talking about the fire analogy, I mentioned logs. You can actually use Grafana to display log data. So that's log lines that like you output on standard output. So how would that happen? Because Mimmer is a time series database, so specializing in metrics, how are we going to do logs? Well, for that, we have Loki, not that Loki. For that, we have Grafana Loki, the L in LGTM. It's like Mimmer, but for logs. While Mimmer and Prometheus stores your metrics data, Loki will be used to scrape and store your log data. You can then use Grafana to uh, query those logs and turn them into metrics. Yes, you heard that right. You can turn uh, Loki logs into metrics that you can then use to display with Grafana. This is very powerful, as I'm sure that anybody who's ever worked with Nginx would really have liked to have some metric statistics. So this dashboard is built completely from the log output of uh, Nginx instance. So you can see there's a lot of very important things that you might want to know that is only available. And if you see here in the corner, I'm in the way uh, that you can see, it's only really like not very valuable to have a list of that, very much more valuable to have it displayed in graphs. The um, way that you would get logs into Loki is by using a component called Promptail. Promptail is the thing that scrapes the logs from your services or your nodes. And then that would then push it to Loki, which will then store it as efficiently as possible. Uh, Grafana agent is here again, uh, so, which you can also use to scrape logs. And then you would use Grafana to query it from Loki and then display it the way that you want. So logs are great. We now know why something is on fire, but we would really like to know where the fire started and how it possibly could have moved from the kitchen to the databases. Uh, so Grafana helps with that too. You can display trace traces with Grafana Tempo, which is the T in LGTM. It's like Loki, but for traces. It stores traces and integrates with Grafana. So just like logs, you can turn your trace data into metrics and yeah, there you see very nice uh, statistics. Uh, if you just want to see the traces, if you've ever seen X-Ray before, you will see, you'll be very familiar with if it eventually decides to switch. There we go. Uh, <laughs> be very familiar with what that looks like also allows you to display them uh, this is what an error trace looks like and then grafana also has the node view which is the top down because traces very rarely run in a straight line it usually breaks out from wherever uh, it started and i very much like this uh, visualization just to see the top down view of a trace 
unlike the previous components, uh, Tempo doesn't have a dedicated uh, scraping component and instead integrates with the, with the standard, which is Open Tracing or Jaeger. Or if you really want to, you could use, you could integrate with the uh, X-Ray, um, that tracing utility would all feed into Grafana Tempo. And then again, you would use Grafana to uh, query the traces from Tempo and then display them in visualizations. And there you go. There's a very quick introduction to the LGTM stack and how you can use it to monitor your cloud. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a few pointers because LGTM is one of those great, accidentally turned it off. It's one of those great tools where uh, if, uh, where, uh, it's one of the same way that the greatest tools can give us the most help. They can also cause us the most frustration. So uh, with great power comes great potential to shoot oneself in the foot, as they say. Uh, a very good place to start off with is the four golden signals from Google's uh, SRE book. Very good read, highly recommend. Uh, they, just in a nutshell, they are latency, traffic, errors, and saturation, and they attempt to answer four very important abstractions to what your service or application is doing currently. Saturation tracks how pinned your system is, so how much resources is it using and how much resources are available for it to use. Uh, traffic tracks the rate of requests, so that is an abstraction of the demand being placed on your system. Errors tracks the rate and frequency of certain types of errors and could sometimes also track successes. Should give you a, is something wrong? Is uh, is work being done successfully and latency is tracking the time it takes for a request and should be an abstraction of performance because this is specifically directed at something that's probably working network probably taking request maybe a rest endpoint or something but you will have different systems that have different needs but the four major signals that you want to know the answers that you want from uh, these signals are is there a dem how, what is the demand being placed on my system how much resources is available for my system to use or to grow into? Is something currently wrong? Is work being done? And what is the performance characteristics of my system currently? As you, you'll notice, these are all measuring sticks or indicators. They aren't really causes for something that should be wrong, which is by design. Metrics should more be, should be an indicator that something is awry or that something is fine. You should imagine standing in front of a machine and having a bunch of gauges and blinking lights, and you should be able to say that, yes, these values are good values, or these blinking lights should be blinking. If they're not, or the values are bad, you should immediately be able to tell that, oh, okay, this is this thing that I need to look over there. Uh, which also brings us to another point about monitoring, is that sadly, it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's more like a, a ta uh, tailored, made sweater. Uh, sure, you could wear mine, but it won't fit you as well, now will it? Of course, nothing is stopping you from taking in some amateur tailoring now, is there? And my greatest source of inspiration, if you want to call it, is the Wikimedia's Open Grafana. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Wikimedia project, which is the, which is the technology making Wikipedia work, open sources their, uh, their metrics. You can just go to their Grafana and see all of their visualization metrics. Uh, and there is a lot of them. Like this is just me scrolling down the list. There's more than, there's definitely more than a hundred. And all of them have, are made with the intention of being a resource. So they have descriptions and annotations and reasons why they did certain things, why they could have done other things. Very good uh, uh, exam, by, by example, resource, highly recommend. On the note of openness and open source, uh, LGTM is open source. Woo! License under AGPL v3. Oof, yay! Uh, oh yeah, it's the viral one. Uh, makes it a bit prickly for enterprise customers, but no need to worry. Uh, all the plugins, exporter, libraries, and connecting bits are licensed under Apache and MIT and the like. So as long as you don't have a hankering to go spelunking into the guts of LGTM, uh, you should be fine. If your business clients are still a little bit antsy about that, you can pay for Grafana Cloud or Grafana Enterprise. These are licensed completely differently than the open source counterparts and have none of the viral concerns. 
Enterprise has some very nice additional features like uh, SAML AD integration, white labeling, which is basically you get access to the CSS and the icons and you can make the dashboards look any way you want. Uh, the Wikimedia is a very good example of white labeling uh, auditing. So you can know exactly who broke your dashboard and the veritable PDF mails exporting is built into it. It's great. It also gives you access to enterprise metrics, enterprise logs, and enterprise traces, which is just the, the uh, corporate names for uh, Loki, uh, uh, Mimmer, and Tem Tempo, which are the bigger, better, better versions of their OSS counterparts. Uh, Grafana Cloud offers a managed LGTM experience. So like the great cloud, don't use ours, use theirs. You can just pay for the storage and have them manage uh, keeping uh, LGTM updated. You can just point your logs at them and then just go into the dashboards. And there we really go. So now you have an understanding of the basic components of LGTM and you also have a good, like a nice uh, starting point and some resources you could look at.